Hello and good evening. Um, I'll begin with a call to order here. Um, I call the September 7th, 2021 Special Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order at 7 p.m. Um, we will begin with a roll call. Um, I'll go through each commissioner. Um, Commissioner Christensen. Present. Commissioner Benavides. Benavides is here. Um, if Kiko could let him in, he's currently in as an attendee. Thank you, Director Justice. Let, we'll just kind of hold on here in one minute, let, let the other folks join. Hello, can you hear me? I, yes, I don't know what's going on. The link did not work as as usual and the camera is not working. So I I have no idea. Oh, wait, start video. Maybe this will do it. We can start hear over. you and now we can see you. Um, okay. We were just going through the roll call, um, Commissioner Benavides and uh, your name is up. So <laughs> Commissioner Benavides. Here. <laughs> okay, awesome. Move on to Commissioner Gay. Looks like he might not be connected either. Uh, um, Commissioner Gay is also uh, in, if uh, Kiko could let him in. Stand by. Hi, Commissioner Gay. We were just going through the roll call. Um, we'll go ahead and call your name. You're, you're the next on my list. Um, Commissioner Gay? Here. Okay, Commissioner CV present. And Commissioner Michelson. Present. Okay, let the record re reflect that a quorum is present for the meeting. Um, we'll move on to item 1B, approval of the agenda. Director Justice, are there any changes to the agenda? There are no changes. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, Commissioner Benavides has moved to approve the agenda. Commissioner Michelson has seconded the motion. Uh, we'll move on to a roll call vote. Um, Commissioner Christensen? Yes. Commissioner Benavides? Yes. Commissioner Gay? Yes. Commissioner Seavey? Yes. And Commissioner Michelson? Yes. Okay, the motion carries unanimously. We'll now move on to item two, uh, the public comment period. Residents may address the Planning and Zoning Commission to comment on issues, problems, or successes on topics that do not appear elsewhere on the agenda. Audience members will be given an opportunity to comment on agenda items as they come up. Um, speakers must register with the village staff prior to the beginning of the meeting, and each speaker will be limited to three minutes. Um, Kiko, do we have any members of the public signed up to speak? Not at this time. Tiffany, can you confirm that? Yes, there's no one signed up to speak. Okay, well, that sounds good. Um, if there is anyone in attendance who wishes to speak during the public comment period who did not sign up prior to the meeting, um, you can go ahead and use the raise hand tool in Zoom um, to indicate this. And there are no hands raised. Okay, thank you, Kiko. We'll now move on to public hearings and applications. Um, item 3A, variance 21-08, a request by Scott W. and Raita R. Jordan for a variance from 9.2.7 C5A. The guest house is limited to 1,000 square feet of heated floor area to allow for a guest house of 2,200 square feet in the A1 zone in the Guadalupe Trail character area. The properties are located at 6901 and 6903 Guadalupe Trail Northwest. Um, 6901 Guadalupe Trail is legally known as Tract A1, lands of Scott W. and Raita R. Jordan, being a replat of Tract 185A MRGCD map number 27, situated within pro projected section 20 Township 11 North, Range 3 East, NMPM. Village of Los Ranchos de Albuquerque, Bernalillo County, New Mexico, as filed in the office of the Bernalillo County Clerk on August 15, 1985. 
The property contains 1.531 acres, more or less. 6903 Guadalupe Trail is legally known as Tract 185B, as shown on map number 27 of the Middle Rio Grande Conservancy District, situated within projected section 20, Township 11 North, Range 3 East, NMPM, Village of Los Ranchos de Albuquerque, Bernalillo County, New Mexico. The property contains 0 0.60 acres, more or less. And do we have any commissioners who will recuse themselves from this item? Um, seeing none, uh, Attorney Winter, would you please swear in Director Tiffany Justice? Tiffany, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Director Justice, may we have the planning report? Uh, yes. So, Commissioners, uh, bear with me. This uh, variance request comes with a lot of uh, backstory as to why this request is, is being requested. Um, so you probably have noticed within the packet there is uh, a legal interpretation and a letter from my predecessor as well as some correspondence from myself uh, regarding uh, the different options that have led to this point uh, for the applicant. So uh, for context, this starts with uh, the applicant wanting to replat two properties, um, 6901 and 6903 Guadalupe Trail. Um, and within your packet, you can see the way that they are currently um, platted uh, with one house on 0.6 of an acre and one house or, and two houses on uh, 0.15 acres. Uh, these are described as a house, a guest house and a studio. Uh, for the purposes of our code, these are all considered dwelling units because they all have kitchens. Um, and uh, the property owner owns both of these properties and the two properties are treated um, as, as a, the buildings are essentially shared at this point. Um, they are treated as being the same, even if they are platted uh, differently. So uh, the applicant wants to replat these two properties uh, to have them uh, each be one acre with one uh, lot having all three buildings and then one lot being vacant. Uh, and that would be the lot to the west. Uh, but staff cannot allow the replat of a property that puts three dwellings on a property um, as that is uh, more than our single family residential zoning allows for this uh, zone. So uh, therefore a variance is, is necessary uh, to put all three buildings on the, on the same property. Um, so uh, for context, uh, the, there is one house um, that is on uh, the northernmost property that will remain the main house uh, in, given in the event of a replat, uh, the studio building would become the guest house with, compliant with our um, requirements for a guest house and the guest house will become an accessory building. The big difference between all of these things is that uh, one of the buildings is going to have its kitchen removed, making it an accessory building, therefore no longer a dwelling unit. So uh, the proposed um, replat will have one main house, one guest house conditionally approved, um, and one accessory building. So uh, with all of this, uh, the applicant has applied for a conditional use permit in order to designate one of the buildings as a guest house. Um, but there, whether, whether the main house, the studio, or the guest house is considered officially the conditional use guest house, um, a variance would be required for it uh, because each of these buildings is non-compliant with our uh, conditional use requirements in one way or another. Two of the buildings are more than a thousand square feet of heated area. And one of the buildings is a thousand square feet, but has a garage attached to it. So um, in order to turn any one of these buildings into a guest house, the applicant must have a variance for, for one of them. Um, so just a, as kind of a comparison of the way that the properties currently are laid out and uh, potentially would be with a replat, um, there's various aspects that are currently legally non-conforming um, and would be uh, con would continue to be legally non-conforming or closer into compliance. Uh, so just kind of going through this, uh, there's a table in uh, my report that kind of just goes through existing and proposed. Um, right now, one of the lots is less than one acre, uh, which is less than our minimum lot size. The proposed replat would make both lots one acre, which is compliant with our minimum lot size rec uh, regulations. Uh, the 
22,000, or sorry, 2,200 square foot house uh, would remain the same on both properties and would be considered the main house. The 1,000 square foot uh, guest house with an attached garage uh, is going to have its kitchen removed, making it an accessory building. Uh, and the 2,100 square foot studio um, is going to be uh, officially considered the guest house uh, and subject to our guest house uh, con uh, conditions um, with potentially a variance for uh, being over 1,000 square feet. Currently, the way that their properties are laid out, um, the current guest house, future accessory building, um, does encroach into the side setbacks. All of these buildings encroach into the side setbacks um, fronting Guadalupe Trail. Uh, removal of that lot line will remove uh, that building, at least, from being within the setbacks. Um, the other two buildings would still be legally non-conforming within the setbacks. Um, right now, both properties are compliant with our floor area ratio, uh, which limits the maximum amount of built square footage you can have on a property. And uh, with the replat, um, even with all of the buildings, uh, these buildings are relatively small, so they still fit within our uh, floor area ratio requirements. Um, and uh, the properties both would still be would still comply with our 60% permeability requirement. Um, because this is like a long way to getting to this variance application, um, I have included in your report some alternatives to what has been proposed. Um, there, two of the options are variances. One is for a variance for three dwellings on a property. Um, and in discussion with staff, uh, we recommended requesting a variance that was, you know, quote unquote, for less, uh, hence this uh, request. Um, and the variance for a guest house with a garage um, essentially is equivalent to what is being asked for at this point. Uh, either one of those two buildings would need a request um, in order to, to turn it into the guest house. Um, and the applicant didn't want to pursue um, having the variance for a guest house with a garage because they feel this, but this building is better suited to become an accessory building. Um, the alternative, another alternative is to remove the kitchen in both the guest house and studio, uh, making them both accessory buildings um, and therefore not dwelling units. Um, that still leaves the option available to build a separate guest house um, with a kitchen as another dwelling, um, but the applicant did not want to pursue this as these kitchens have been part of the structures for a long time and they are used um, often in their daily lives. Um, one of the other alternatives is no action uh, where there is no replat and these two properties exist the way that they are. Uh, so with all of that extra context, I'll jump into uh, the variance request itself. Um, with our standard requirements for a variance, uh, section 9.2.25 E7A1, this variance is and is not in conformance with the goals and policies of the master plan. By nature of the request, all variance requests uh, are not conformant with the master plan, since there is language in there that asks that you conform uh, to the code. Uh, but the application is in conformance with the master plan in the overall village goals, village form, uh, historic preservation, and residential development sections. Um, the, the additional context uh, that I believe I skipped over is that these buildings um, have been on the property for um, since the 50s or 60s for a very long time and were built by uh, one of the founding fathers, I guess, of Los Ranchos, um, Frederick O'Hara. And so the reason for this request and the reason why uh, the applicant does not want to uh, alter these buildings as much as possible is for the purposes of historic preservation. And the idea that these properties have kind of always been used um, together with all these buildings together, um, and they just want to kind of put them all in the same property at this point. Um, and so in accordance with section 9.2.25 E7A2, this variance is not contrary to the public interest. Um, as I mentioned, for the purposes of historic preservation and maintaining the general purpose and intent of the A1 zone, um, to preserve the residential slash agricultural character of the area and accompany open spaces while allowing low density residential development created in this zone at one dwelling unit per acre in conformance with the master plan. Uh, so the residential development on these properties is low density, uh, both well below our maximum allowable built square footage, um, and that all these buildings are single story, and the number of existing dwelling units is historical. Um, and in conformance with our master plan. Um, the request preserves the integrity of these locally historic structures while maintaining the low residential density of the A1 zone. Of course, this still puts three, um, well, two dwelling units on the property, but one would be a conditional use uh, guest house, uh, which brings it closer into conformance with the code. Um, and the village received no comments in favor or, op or in opposition prior to publishing of the meeting packet. 
uh, and also in accordance with section 9.2.25E783, this variance meets hardship criteria number five, that other relevant factors exist that when taken into account indicate that granting of the variance is substantially justifiable, giving proper weight to the interest of the property owner, public interest in protecting and fostering the character of the vicinity of the village, and the intent and purpose of the master plan and zone code. Uh, this variance request, as mentioned before, is for the purposes of historic preservation of the buildings uh, and their intended use, uh, the way that they were built, um, and trying to maintain that as much as possible um, and is justifiable in accordance with the master plan and the public interest as stated um, in other um, section in other uh, criteria for the variance um, and this application is in conformance with section 9.2.257 c1 through 6 if this doesn't affect the zoning uh, all the uses are still residential um, and allowed uh, in the a1 zone financial gain or loss is not a deciding factor the variance differs only enough to relieve the alleged hardship. Uh, the hardship is not self-imposed by the property owner as prior property owners built the structures on the property and uh, they currently wish to preserve the structures. No prior application for a variance has been submitted on this property in the prior six months. And this application does not set precedence for larger guest houses as this building already exists as is and the variance will be granted on the grounds of historic preservation. Um, so with that, the department recommends approval of B21-08 uh, for a variance from section 9.2.7 c5a the guest house is limited to 1,000 square feet of heated floor area to allow for a guest house of 2,100 uh, square feet in the a1 zone in the guadalupe trail character area with the following findings and conditions and uh, just as a quick note for the difference in the um, square footage that it was included in the notice and what was noted in the application um, just basically it's, it's in between uh 20 2100 and 2200 square feet. Um, it's closer to 2100 square feet. Um, and this was just a, a we, I got further clar clarification from the applicant uh, that, the stu that the studio building would is uh, 2100 square feet. Um, and so the conditions included with this uh, are that this variance is applied to the existing studio building at uh, 6901 Guadalupe Trail, considered a guest house per uh, conditional use 21-03. Demolition of the existing studio building at 6901 Guadalupe Trail shall constitute expiration of this variance, and future subdivision or replatting of 6901 or 6903 Guadalupe Trail must place the three existing structures uh, on one lot, and both lots must meet the minimum lot size of the A1 zone unless with a variance. But the findings that the variance request meets our requirements of section 9.2.25 E7A one, two, three, uh, and C. Or, sorry, A, one, two, and three, B, and uh, C. And public notice requirements have been met. I do stand for any questions at this time. Thank you, Director Justice. Um, are there any questions from the commission to the planning director at this point? Um, so just to clarify, uh, Conditional use 21-03, that was approved administratively, correct? There was no adverse comment publicly given? Yes, uh, that is correct. We uh, asked the applicant uh, to get a conditional use permit uh, because this variance request would not apply if there's no conditional use for the property. Um, during that, there was no adverse comment received. Thank you, Director Justice. Um, are there any other questions from the commission? I have, I have one more um, on page 22, just looking at the plat provided, there's what appears to be an easement running between the two properties, um, kind of on the, I'd say the south side. Um, do you see that? It's like a 10 foot wide, it appears to be an easement. Is that gonna be vacated during the platting process or what's going on there? Uh, commissioner, CV commissioners, uh, that's a good question that perhaps the applicant will be able to answer. Um, I'm not seeing any notation on what that easement is for. Um, but if it is a uh, access easement, they have the option to vacate that. Um, if it's a utility easement, they would need approval from the utilities in order to vacate that. Okay, thank you, Director Justice. Um, is the applicant present? Yes, stand by. Stand by.
Good evening, are you able to hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Great, would you please state your uh, name and address for the record? Uh, my name is Scott Jordan. My address is 6903 Guadalupe Trail. Thank you. Attorney Winter, would you please swear in Mr. Jordan? Mr. Jordan, can you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Jordan, would you like to speak about your application? Um, well, we've lived here about 50 years. Uh, We've always kind of had in mind uh, getting both of the pieces of property back together that Freddie originally built as a house, a studio, and a guest house. Um, it turned out to be a little harder than we thought it would be. <laughs> um, at any at any rate, we've uh, you know lovingly taken care of these buildings, and uh, I guess this is just the next step in our efforts. Well, excellent. Um... Is there any questions from the commissioners um, for, for the applicant, for Mr. Jordan? Uh, yeah, yes, I have a, a question. Uh, 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 so the the back lot, the the uh, western most lot. Yes. Uh, the access to that will be through the, uh, I, I guess it's not really a road, it's an easement, right? But it, that, yeah, that, let, yeah I, I can clarify that easement. That that easement um, actually was an easement for access to 6903 that existed prior to our purchasing 03. So, uh, and, and I don't believe that it's actually a legal easement. I don't think it was ever filed. But, but anyway, it's on the plat. And uh, yeah, we would probably vacate that. The access to that back lot is down uh, Guadalupe Lane, just to our south. Okay, Guadalupe Lane being perpendicular to Guadalupe Trail. Correct. Okay. And so that'll be the access, but the addresses uh, for both pieces of property will be Guadalupe Trail? Guadalupe Trail would be the access for one, uh, the one, the easterly division, and the westerly division would be access down Guadalupe Lane Place, whatever it is, just to our south. So the question is, the address will that address be Guadalupe Trail or Guadalupe Lane? Well, the people who live back there have Guadalupe Trail addresses. Okay. Yeah. Directly behind us is uh, 6905 to the west of us is oh. 6905 Guadalupe Trail. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from the commission for uh, Mr. Jordan? All right, well, hearing none, um, is there anyone present who would like to speak in favor of the application? There are no hands raised. Okay, thank you, Kiko. Um, conversely, is there anyone present who would like to speak in opposition to the application? Uh, yes, please stand by. Sorry about that. Can you hear Hi, are you now? able to hear us? Yes, sir. Okay, would you please state your full name and address for the record? My name is Linnea Sands. I'm here with my husband, Jim. We are at 6913 Guadalupe Trail, which is the property that is just immediately north of this. Okay, Attorney just Winter- Just at the top you... of your plats, yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, Attorney Winter, would you please swear in um, Linnea and Jim Sands? Okay, are you both planning on testifying? Uh, I think I'll probably be the only one speaking. Okay, just in case, I'll have you both raise your right hand. Jim, you got to get in the camera. Oh. <laughs> Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. So, God, yes. 
Okay, um, please go ahead with your comment. I'm not sure it's actually something that's opposed. I wanted to ask a couple clarifying questions. Um, one of them was that um, the plat showed, I, I guess I wanna get clarification of what, based on building standards, because if the back lot is sold, I'm assuming something can be built on it, what would be declared the front, back, and the sides of that lot? Um, do we know? Because we have a concern. Uh, so Mrs. Sands, um, commissioners, uh, I can speak to that. Um, so the lot will, both lots will still be zoned A1. Um, and the setbacks for those are 25 feet from the front and the rear, and then 15 on the sides. Because this property, the, the new, the Western property that's gonna abut um, 6913 and is, and is vacant right now, their access would legally be from uh, the access easement on the South Guadalupe Lane. So that's considered the front. The rear is gonna be the opposite of that. That's gonna be the property line closest to you. Um, and that's, that setback is gonna be 25 feet. On the west and east sides, it's gonna be 15 feet. So I guess it, it could be said that this, if, if approved, this uh, replat would actually put potentially any potential building further away from you than currently. Uh, is allowed. Right now, this property does have access off of Guadalupe Trail. So right now, the access could be considered on the east and west sides as front and rear, and then um, 15 on the sides. So this, this replat could potentially put the building for any potential building sure. further away from you at 25 feet. Thank you, Director Justice. I appreciate that. The, the other question I have is it looks like this easement uh, to the north of 690, is it one um, or 6903? There's an easement there. Um, that differs from what's on my survey uh, of our property. Uh, so it's what is shown in the application isn't necessarily the potential new plat. So this is, these are old documents. Um, that would need to be updated with a new survey with a new plat. Um, so if it does differ from your survey, the surveyor should identify that and correct that. Okay. And will we be uh, allowed to be in that process so that we can know what the... So if the easement is on your property, um, it, it would show as being on your property. If it's on their property, it would show as being on their property. Um, it's unlikely that you would be involved in the process unless they're trying to vacate or change any easement that's on your property. And so, they would need, so the they would need is, your ex explicit permission to do that. I guess what I'm asking is, is there a possibility that that will be approved and we'll lose 10 feet of that entire front field or however many feet that is? Showing it be like 18 inches. So if it's on your property, it should this replat would not affect you at all with that okay. 10 feet. Um, if it's on their property, uh, they have the right to do that if, if right. it's on their property. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for answering my questions. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, Kiko, do we have, oh, did you have any more questions, Ms. Sands, before we move on? Oh, okay. Take that as a, we're good. Um, Kiko, do we have anyone else lined up to speak in opposition to the uh, application? I have another hand raised. I'm, I'm not sure if it's in opposition or for standby. It's still there. Hello. Oh, what, was it you, Mr. Jordan, who raised your yeah. hand? Yes, I, I was just going to respond to Linda. Um, Sure. Uh, if you don't mind, sir, let me just confirm with Kiko that we don't have anyone else lined up to speak, and then you'll have an opportunity to address these at the end of the comment period. Um, Kiko, any other hands, or can we uh, move on? Yes, stand by. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess they're, they declined the promotion so, um, to panelist at this point. So there are no other hands raised. Okay, thank you, Kiko. Um, so Mr. Jordan, would you like to respond to any of these comments? 
Um, well, yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, respond to Linda's comment. I, I'm assuming she's talking about our proposed easement down the north side of our property uh, uh, on the back lot, on the western lot. And that um, would be an irrigation easement. And I, whatever the back setback is, it would be either that or something less. Um, also, we don't have any intention of developing that back lot in the foreseeable future. Uh, and yeah, she can certainly uh, speak with the surveyors and be involved in that process. I mean, you know. so any, anyway, I, I don't I don't see any problems with that. And I, I don't know what she's talking about north of 03. Um, the eastern lot. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I mean, that our house is very close to the property line. But we don't, I mean, our property line is a foot and a half or something to the north of that house. It's not 10 feet. And there's no easement to the north of the house. There's no easement on her property that I'm aware of. <laughs> Okay, well, that sounds good. Um, do we do we have any uh, further comments from the commission? Looks like Commissioner Gay has his hand raised. Yeah, Commission, <clears throat> excuse me, Chair Seavey, I would like to get the woman who was just on back, if it's possible. I'm not following what she, I'm not following her version of her survey versus what we're seeing here. I'm, I'm pretty sure I understand what's on this. That is a road and utility easement. That's not anybody's, you know, that can't be encroached into, but I'm a little concerned that she feels that she has possibly has a different survey and that, that concerns me. So Kiko, is it possible to get her back on? Absolutely, she actually raised her hand, standby. Can you all hear me now? Whoops, yes, me... we can hear you. Uh, Ms. Sands, go ahead, please. I think I misspoke with the address, uh, Scott. It, what I was talking about, if you look on page 27 of the plat, oh, I'm sorry, is it 21? Yes, 21, I'm sorry, 21. Do you see uh, up is north on this? Um, what I was referring to is this green line that is north of the blue, which is where the house is built on the property line. There was a green line, and I assumed that that was um, an easement. That, that green line is an artifact of the uh, county's overlay. It, 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 it's a screen capture. It, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't reflect any accurate. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, that, that's a, I, I kind of aligned my lines with the actual projection, what I can see there, not, not where the county just projected their lines on the map. I, I appreciate that, Scott. That, that was just my concern was that it looked like maybe it was coming and I didn't know how many feet it was. Uh, that was my concern. Right. No, I understand. Yeah, I, I thought maybe you were talking about the uh, proposed easement uh, south of you. That's really just an irrigation, just to preserve the irrigation. Right. There. Sure. Yeah. No, I don't have any problem with that. Yeah. And also, uh, I enjoy being able to get water up to the eastern law. Eastern. Sure. Yeah. I, yeah, I understand. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Scott, I have a question. This is Jim. Um, on the road itself, we'll call it Guadalupe Place or whatever. Is that a private road? Because that's what someone just mentioned to me. It, it is a private road. And um, uh, Jojo to the south owns it presently. We, uh, we had an access uh, added to the deed when we owned the road for a brief period. Okay, so then 
And the road, think, the road has changed hands several times since we owned it. Okay. So I guess several people may own part of the easement or part of the road. And I uh, guess then it would just be maintained as a private road and easement um, even after this. I guess, yeah, yeah. Okay. Everybody that's back there, what there's uh, four, nine, about 15, 13, 14, 15 people. Yeah, right. Right. Okay, I was just curious because one person was asking me about it. I thought it was a public road, but I guess it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and Jojo's doing a great job taking care of it. I think that's why he wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> Jojo. Oh. Yeah. Joseph to the south here. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Sands. Um, any other comments while you're still on? Yeah, let's back uh, up Commissioner Gay. a little ways here. So you, well, Mrs. Ms. Sands, you said that that differed from your survey. Is that correct or not oh, correct? Well, what I was saying is that, that our survey showed that the property line um, north, the property line blue and north um, was also probably approximately where that green line was to be. Okay. So that and was so to your I think satisfaction. I did. Thank you so much, Mr. Gay. I appreciate now, it. The next one is there's a, a road called a, a road easement south of 6901 and six. Well, it'll be how 6901 accesses their property in, if they get this subdivision replatted. And so that's not necessarily a question for you, Mr. and Ms. Sands, but to the owner of the property, do you have a do you have access agreements in place for that? Um, it, it, it's in the deed for the road, yes. When we we owned the road for a brief period in the mid 80s, but it's not a road, it's a driveway. It's a private piece of property, yeah. Or are, are you talking on our plat, on the property itself? No, I'm, I'm talking where you're, you're not gonna access 6901 through 6903, is that correct? You're not gonna be able to access- Well, I, I'm not sure how the county will allot the addresses, but the proposed Eastern lot would be accessed uh, off of Guadalupe Trail. And, and the, the proposed Western the, lot would be accessed, would be accessed off, off that road to the South of us, which is a private road presently owned by my neighbor to the South. Right, but that's my question. Do you have an agreement with that neighbor to, to use that road for access when you well, the, the deed property. the deed for the road we have deeded access to it we wrote it into the deed when we owned the road but you don't own it anymore we don't own it anymore but it's an easement in the deed and it was that included with your package of submittal um no because i uh decided that that was a better a matter handled by the surveyors and when we work out all those details obviously we're not going to be able to replat it if we don't have access to it yeah okay. uh, if i could just interject commissioner gay mm -hmm. there's uh so this application is for a variance for the guest house all replatting actions will occur administratively and will be con and will be confirmed to be conforming at that time so the applicant submittal only pertains to uh, the variance request and is not a potential replat. So 6901 or what's what's called 6901 was the administrative approval? Uh, so did? Commissioner Gay, commissioners, the administrative approval that has occurred is a conditional use permit for uh, 6901 um, for one of those buildings to be a guest house. This variance request mm -hmm. is for that guest house permit um, to allow for a guest house that's over 1,000 square feet. Um, vacation of any easements, confirming of lot lines, um, addressing will all be handled during the replat process, which is administrative, and the addresses are assigned by Bernalillo County. Okay, 
that doesn't concern you that you don't have any proof that they can access this property through that driveway? Uh, Commissioner Gay, commissioners, if that is an issue at that time, that will need to be addressed. And if that is an issue that does not allow for replatting of the property, they would need to come in for a variance or they would need to uh, alter their proposed replat. But at this time, uh, if this variance request is approved, one of the conditions is that all three buildings be on the same property. Um, so they may have, they may not uh, do the lot line, the, the lot split the way that they have shown in the packet. However, um, if approved, this variance would require that all three buildings be on the same property, whether there's an access easement that goes through the middle, uh, whether there's um, access that's um, obtained on the south side, um, that will need to be determined at a later time, or the applicant will be um, forced to not replat. But that is that is something that would be um, addressed administratively if this variance is approved. Okay, so that doesn't concern you. That's answered the question. No, it does not at this time. Thank you. Okay, um, do we have any further discussion from the commission while the applicant is present? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close the floor now for comments. And among the commission, um, is there any discussion on the application prior to a motion? I would say that um, this was a nice thorough report uh, and uh, the, the hardship criteria five, which um, kind of points towards historic preservation, I think is a really strong point um, for preserving these, these three historic structures. And um, for those reasons, um, I, am, I feel inclined to, to approve the variance. Um, would any other commissioners like to, uh, to discuss this before a motion is made? Hearing none, um, is there a motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion uh, to approve the variance with the conditions as uh, outlined in, in uh, Director Justice's report. I'll second the motion. Okay, uh, Commissioner Benavides has moved to approve uh, the variance with the conditions as spelled out in the report and Commissioner Michelson has seconded. Um, we'll now move on to a roll call vote. Commissioner Christensen? Yes. Commissioner Benavides? Yes. Commissioner Gay? I believe you're muted, Commissioner Gay. Yes. Uh, Commissioner CV, yes. Commissioner Michelson? Yes. The motion carries unanimously. Um, let the record show that public hearing item 3A, the request by Scott W. and Rita R. Jordan for a variance is formally closed. Um, okay, we will now move on to item 3B, conditional use 21-04. A request by Jessica Lane for a recreational vehicle used as a temporary dwelling during the construction of a dwelling on the same premises, as allowed by 9.2.7 C4 in the R3 zone in the 4th Street character area. The property is located at 317 Pueblo Solano Road Northwest and is legally known as Lot 11A, Valrica Edition in Projected Section 21, Township 11 North, Range 3 East, NMPM, within the Elena Gallegos grant, Bernalillo County, New Mexico, as filed in the office of the Bernalillo County Clerk on July 8th, 1991. The property contains 0 0.311 acres, more or less. Um, do we have any commissioners who will um, be recusing themselves from this item? No. Okay, hearing none, um, it, let's see. Uh, Director Justice, may we please have the planning report? Uh, yes, uh, commissioners, just as a heads up, uh, my internet might be uh, cutting in and out. So if I uh, leave during the middle of my report, it is essentially the same 
uh, what I'm saying verbally is what is already currently in my report. So you are welcome to move on if that happens. Um, so with that, um, this application is a conditional use uh, permit, basically an extension of an existing conditional use that was approved administratively last year uh, for a temporary dwelling. Um, a, a mobile home uses a temporary dwelling during construction of a permanent dwelling on a property. Uh, the temporary dwelling is an Airstream trailer um, that uh, met our conditions for approval administratively last year. Uh, we required a bond uh, connection to utilities um, and the same would have to apply uh, if this conditional use is approved. Um, the reason for this application is that um, the original administratively approved application expired uh, in July of this year um, and they are requesting an extension of that uh, because there's an extension of that. It's now going before the Planning and Zoning Commission for your all's determination. Um, in the interim of July up until this point, um, it just has been administratively continued. Um, and uh, so, let's see. So uh, for the analysis of a conditional use permit that's approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, the applicant um, has demonstrated progress in construction of their permanent dwelling during this original one year period. And they also, uh, further provided additional documents for construction uh, that uh, was submitted after this packet was published, but I did forward to you all. Um, just that just kind of further proves the, their intent to build a permanent structure on this property. Um, and the reason that they uh, were not able to um, work on the construction during the interim, of course, was due to COVID-19 um, pandemic uh, interfered a little bit with that. Um, so uh, for our conditional use requirements, Per section 9.2.25 E2A, B, and C, uh, the application shall be approved considering uh, first A, uh, that the proposed use will be in conformance with the master plan and will not be injurious to adjacent property, the neighborhood, or the community. The continued use of this Airstream, tra Airstream trailer for temporary dwelling um, is not injurious to the area as it's connected to utilities. The applicant uh, has demonstrated work on a permanent home in the pro on the property, and the use has been going uh, ongoing for a year without complaints uh, received by the planning and zoning department. And the application is in conformance with the master plan in the village form uh, section. Uh, for condition uh, B, uh, I've included conditions as part of my recommendation for approval. Uh, and for C, an application for a conditional use has not been filed within the last six months. And so with that, the department recommends approval of CU 21-04 for a recreational vehicle used as a temporary dwelling during the construction of a dwelling on the same premises as allowed by section 9.2.7 C4 in the R3 zone in the forestry character area with the following conditions and findings. Uh, the conditions are um, essentially the same as what was approved administratively last year uh, with just a big difference with condition A. Um, the use of the recreational vehicle as a dwelling is limited to a maximum period of one year from date of conditional use permit approval and must cease use as a temporary dwelling either after one year or when the permanent dwelling is constructed and issued a certificate of occupancy, whichever is sooner. B, the applicant must post a bond of $1,000 for the duration of this permit. And C, the applicant must continue to fully connect the temporary dwelling to utilities, water, sewer, gas, electricity for the duration of this permit with the findings that section 9.2.25 E2 a, B, C, and D have been met. Condition or condition D, of course, being that public notice requirements have been met. And I stand for any questions. Thank you, Director Justice. Um, do we have any questions from the commission for the planning director? Yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead. One question. So uh, condition C, uh, I, I, so I assume that the applicant is currently connected to sewer. Uh, Commissioner Benavidez, commissioners, yes, the applicant is connected um, to the utilities. They can confirm which utilities that they are connected to uh, at, the, at time of speaking. Okay, that, that would be good, yeah. Okay, any other questions? Um, I do have one, and, and sorry if you covered this, but um, is there a reason why this was just not administratively approved? Did, was adverse comment received? Uh, so, uh, Commissioner CV, commissioners, uh, actually, uh, the reason why this is before the Planning and Zoning Commission is that um, there's a section of our conditional use approval for this for this uh, that mentions quote starting with quotes 
The one year period shall commence on the date that conditional use approval is granted or the date the use actually began, if earlier or as approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. End quote. So the reason is that the one year period has expired, therefore, to get a longer uh, time period uh, does need to be approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. I see. Thank you, Director Justice. That, that clears it up for me. And uh, I guess, uh, Commissioner CV, Commissioners, just uh, for your edification, uh, we did not receive any comments in favor or in opposition prior to publishing the meeting packet. Sounds good. Thank you. Well, if there aren't any further questions, um, is the applicant present? Stand by. Can you hear us now? Excuse me. Yeah, hi, good evening. Okay. Um, hi, hi, Director Justice. Hi, Commissioners. Could you please state your names and addresses for the uh, for the record? Jesse Lane, Jessica Lane, 317 Pueblo Solano Road, Northwest. And Green, oh, sorry, I was going to raise my hand, but that's not that <laughs> part yet. Rain Chamberlain, 317 Pueblo Solano Road, Northwest. Thank you. Attorney Winter, would you please swear in uh, Miss Miss Lane and Mr. Chamberlain? Okay, Ms. Lane, Mr. Chamberlain, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, would you like to speak about your application? Yeah, actually, I don't really have much to add um, to the application. I think it speaks for itself with the addition that Director Justice provided. Um, so I think really just my partner and I wanted to show up to introduce, introduce ourselves um, and be present in case there was any questions that came up. Um, and actually also just to thank Director Justice and the, the staff at Los Ranchos for being just so consistent and informative over this uh, not so easy past year. So um, thank you and thank you for your time. Great, well, thank you. Um, I, I, I'll, uh, I would also like to, um, I would like to speak to the, the permit um, on one piece, just because I know the question's coming anyways. And uh, But first, I would also just like to say that um, uh, the, the staff at the uh, at Los Ranchos and Director Tiffany, uh, Director Justice, uh, have been really consistent and available, which during all of this time, getting anybody available is just amazing uh, and uh, very prompt in response. It's just been really appreciated in our grounding here. Um, also, um, the people of Los Ranchos uh, and um, the environment is wonderful. I feel really grateful and appreciative to be here. Um, and during these times, I feel like it's really important to say positive things when you have the opportunity because there's so many other things being said right now. Um, and then my piece to uh, what the question I know is coming is we are hooked to power, water, and sewer on the property. Um, so all of that is in place and working as it should. Excellent. Well, thank, thank you for that positive feedback. And um, do we have any questions from the uh, commission for the applicants? All right. Well, hearing none, um, Kiko, do we have anyone um, lined up to speak in favor of the application? No, sir. Okay, and uh, conversely, do, is anybody lined up to speak in opposition to the application? No, sir. Okay, thank you, Kiko. Um, well, with that, um, do we have any further comments or questions from the commission for the applicants before uh, I close the floor? Uh, that's us. Yeah. Okay. For the end. Oh, for the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, if there's if there's nothing else to be said, um, I'm going to go ahead and close the floor now for comments. Um, and is there any discussion among the commission um, before we go to a motion? Okay. Well, hearing none. Um, you know, seeing that uh, seeing that they are meeting their the requirements and that they've 
shown um, progress on construction, it, it seems to make sense to allow this to, to um, facilitate having them finish their home. Um, and it's, you know, to me at least, it's completely understandable that uh, things would go sideways during a pandemic. So I'm glad that they've, you know, stayed above board and came before the commission to clear this. Um, so I personally uh, would definitely approve this. Um, if there's no other discussion, do we have a motion? Well, was that just the motion that you made, Chair CV? No, sir, that was just discussion. There's no motion has been made yet. I will make a motion to approve CU 2104 as presented. I will second the motion. Um, Commissioner Gay has moved to approve um, CU 21-04 as presented and Commissioner Seavey has seconded the motion. Um, we'll now move on to a roll call vote. Discussion? Uh, yes, sir, uh, please go ahead. Uh, sorry, so uh, our, our clarification. Uh, so um, uh, Commissioner uh, Dan Gay, did you, you mean to include the conditions as well, right? Outline in the report? Yeah. Okay. I think he accomplished that by saying as presented. Um, okay. I, I think that, that covers us. Do we have any other discussion before moving on to a roll call vote? Okay, hearing none, um, we'll start with uh, Commissioner Christensen. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Benavides. Yes. Commissioner Gay. Yes. Commissioner CV. Yes. And Commissioner Michelson. Yes. All right, the motion carries unanimously. Let the record show that the public hearing item 3B, the request by Jessica Lane for a recreational vehicle used as a temporary dwelling is formally closed. Um, thank you everyone for attending. And we'll now move on to item 3C, bed and breakfast 21-01. It's a request by Paul and Cassandra Holmes for a bed and breakfast permit as allowed by 9.2.25 E1 in the A1 zone in the Guadalupe Trail character area. The property is located at 6769 Guadalupe Trail Northwest and is legally known as Lot A3, Lands of Rothman, Projected Section 29, Township 11 North, Range 3 East, NMPM, Village of Los Ranchos de Albuquerque, Bernalillo County, New Mexico as filed in the office of the Bernalillo County Clerk on July 5th, 1979. The property contains 1.6 acres, more or less. Um, do we have any commissioners who will recuse themselves from this item? Seeing none, um, Director Justice, um, could we please have the planning report? Uh, yes, commissioners. Uh, so just for context for this application and the rest of the applications on the agenda tonight, um, all of the application uh, reports are very similar, uh, since this is mostly a checklist of things that applicants need to have uh, in place in order to potentially be approved. Um, and just as a heads up from uh, for this meeting and in uh, future meetings for the next couple of months, um, our grace period to grandfather in uh, legally nonconforming, already existing uh, short-term rentals um, is up until October 6th. Uh, so up from now until the uh, November agenda, um, we will likely see already existing uh, operations that are coming in to be grandfathered in. Um, we are grandfathering in, we are allowing them to be grandfathered in for two criteria, the maximum number of guest rooms and off-premises operator. Um, they are required to come into compliance with all of our other requirements if they are not already. So that's um, mostly just context for this and any uh, future bed and breakfast applications. Um, so uh, this operation has existed since 2017 um, and this application, so therefore this application can be grandfathered in. Um, bed and breakfasts are permissive uses in residential zones as long as they have a bed and breakfast permit. And there's a number of requirements for applicants to meet. Um, and this applicant is in compliance with all of them um, that I've detailed in the report. Um, they are in compliance uh, with things like they are living on the property, um, the number of guest rooms, uh, having off-street parking, uh, compliant rules of operation, um, and their floor plan and site plan uh, meet uh, the requirements that we have. So um, 
even though this is an existing operation prior to June of 2021 uh, that allows for legal nonconformance uh, for the number of guest rooms and off-premises operator, uh, this applicant's already compliant with both of those requirements um, and legally nonconforming status is unnecessary. Uh, this application is in conformance with the economic development section of our master plan. Um, and with that, the department recommends approval of BB21-01, a request for a bed and breakfast permit as allowed by section 9.2.25E1 in the A1 zone in the Guadalupe Trail character area with the following conditions and findings. Um, operation is subject to the requirements for bed and breakfast establishments listed under section 9.2.25E1. Per section 9.2.25E1B12, uh, the operator must include license number in advertisements. Uh, per section 9.2.25 E1B14, the operator must post their license in operation where it's visible. Um, per uh, 9.2.25 E1B17, uh, the bed and breakfast must be inspected annually by the fire department. Uh, with the findings that this application is in conformance with section 9.2.25 E1 and public notice requirements have been met. I stand for any questions. Thank you, Director Justice. Um, do we have any questions from the commission? Uh, Commissioner Michelson. Yes. Has this applicant received any, or has the village received any complaints from this applicant for the bed and breakfast operation? Commissioner Michelson, commissioners, uh, I do not believe that we've received any complaints uh, about this particular address regarding their operation of a bed and breakfast. Um, I can confirm Thank you. that though. Commissioner Gay, I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, Tiffany, can you go back and, and restate the date about being in compliance for a bed and breakfast that was already operating? I thought it was, I thought June of 2021 was the cutoff for all, all uh, business that was so I'm surprised they're here October. Where did, did I just miss something, obviously? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, so Commissioner Gay, commissioners, uh, there's a few dates that are thrown around for this regulation. So we adopted new short-term rental slash bed and breakfast rules uh, in July of this year. So prior to this point, uh, short-term rentals, Airbnbs, the RBOs were operating unregulated essentially. So we did adopt rules for regulation. Because they've been operating prior to the adoption of our new ordinance in June, we are giving them a grace period to be grandfathered in for two criteria, off-premises operator and um, maximum number of guest rooms. So they need to apply by October 6th in order to uh, qualify for that legally nonconforming status. Um, and they have to provide proof of operation prior to June of this year uh, in order to confirm that uh, legally nonconforming status. Anybody who um, was operating prior to June of this year uh, who misses the grace period, um, they would need to apply for a variance for uh, anything that isn't um, a, any deviation from uh, our requirements for bed and breakfast permits. So the, the reason why I say October 6th is just just so that you all know that within the next couple of months, we will likely be receiving more bed and breakfast applications for operations that have currently existed. And our June cutoff is just that we, that, that's, I guess, our new regulations. And so we want to have proof that you've been operating prior to June of this year. And so the applicant has provided proof of that uh, showing operations since at least October of 2017. So where, where are these October dates written? In, uh, so in our uh, ordinances or our proposed. Uh, Commissioner Gay, commissioners, uh, page 84 of your packet has a quotation of, or a quotation of the code and the section uh, relevant for bed and breakfast permits. Mm -hmm. Under subsection E, um, it mentions our uh, four, four operations that have been operating prior to June that we required to get a bed and breakfast permit. Um, and uh, operators will have until October 6th of 2021 to apply for bed and breakfast permit with their legally non-conforming status. And we are doing, we are trying to do some PSAs for um, existing operators uh, so that they know to get in before this uh, deadline. Uh, we put a notice uh, in the Village Vision magazine, 
um, and we're contracting with a company that identifies addressing for short-term rentals. Uh, that way we can send them individual letters that kind of details this whole process for them. Um, and so we're in the middle of sending out those letters to the addresses that we have. There are still some that are unidentified this time. Um, so we're trying to just get the word out as much as possible. So let me just restate that. If a short-term rental was operating in the village Los Ranchos, the deadline for them or the, the date that they had to prove was that they were in business before June 2021, before they could be excluded from the two sections of the ordinance, specifically the um, one where it does not um, require you to live, for the operator to live in the, in the building. I'm, I'm still unclear, is June 20, 21, the deadline for these businesses to prove that they were in existence, or is it October? The dead, well, so the October deadline is for them to prove that they've been in existence. Um, they need to prove that they've been in existence prior to June. So if somebody's starting a business right now, they could, do not have the option to be grandfathered in. Okay. If they were operating prior to adoption of our new ordinance in June, they do have the option to be grandfathered in so long as they provide proof that they were operating before June by yeah. October 6th. Okay, so if they, if they weren't in exist or they couldn't prove they were operating in existence in July of 2021, they would not be allowed to, to do these to, to get in under the radar of these two um, sections. Yes, so if somebody started their operation in July of this year, um, they do not have the option to be legally grandfathered in. Okay. Um, so they would have to comply with all of our requirements, including the on-premises operator and uh, maximum number of rooms. All right, thanks, Tiffany. All right. Um, I, I do have a quick question about this. Uh, there is a village cap on the number of short-term rentals, and I believe I was reading, is it 65? Yeah, yes, that is correct. So I guess uh, for context for commissioners, um, we will allow applications to come before you up until we reach that cap. Um, there is no way that you would approve an application and there wouldn't be enough permits available to issue that. Um, so just so that you're aware, any application that comes before you will be within that 65. Great. And can you just indicate where we are in terms of um, numbers and how close we are to that cap at, at the moment? Yes, uh, Commissioner CV, commissioners, this is the first application. Uh, so technically this would be number one. Um, there are uh, a handful of existing bed and breakfast permits uh, that will be, um, so they currently have the village's old bed and breakfast permit. And so uh, upon their renewal, we're just going to ask them for the additional documentation that we require, but since they've already been approved, uh, they will not come before the Planning and Zoning Commission. So if we include those handful, then we probably have six. Great. Well, I Thanks mean, so much. I, I, with, with this application, with the rest of these uh, tonight, we would likely have eight or nine. Excellent. Thank you for that clarification. Um, well, uh, is the, um, oh, ex yeah, uh, Commissioner Benavides, go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, question for Director Justice. So uh, prior to the adoption of the new short-term rental ordinances, we did have uh, a bed and breakfast permit. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, and then a follow on. So th those that are being grandfathered in uh, with, uh, with, and, and allowed to, to do things like uh, have uh, more, more bedrooms or, or be off premises. I think those are the two things you, you, you said. So they previously had the old B and B permit. Uh, no, Commissioner Benavides, commissioners, these folks do not have the old B and B permit. 
the folks that have the old B and B permit will not come before the commission for their renewal. They will automatically just get another like renewal on their license. Okay, and so so they were operating under the radar, and they should have been letting the village know that they had a B and B. Is that correct? Uh, so, Commissioner Benavides, commissioners, that's not that's not the case. Uh, so we did not have regulation that covered uh, short-term rentals um, like, Airbnb, like Airbnbs and VRBOs. Um, we had a bed and breakfast permit, but we also did not say that if you operate a VRBO where you do not live in the house, that you should that you cannot do that. So with this uh -huh. new regulation, we've clarified that short-term rentals, including Airbnbs and VRBOs, are so it's kind of an umbrella term for short-term rentals that bed and breakfasts fit underneath, as yeah. well as these other types. And now we're we're kind of requiring that all these other types get um, the requirements that we have for bed and breakfast. And, and there's additional just requirements that we didn't used to have um, for like proof of ownership and that kind of thing. Well, I mean, back to uh, Commissioner uh, Drew's question about a cap, and you said this would be the first one, but but it is that's not quite right because a lot of them that did have old permits will be part of that 65 cap, right? Yes. So I guess at this point, this would be considered number five. Okay. Ah. Okay. So one adi one additional uh, question. Uh, so looking at the conditions that you listed in your report, uh, they reference. Uh, a, a part of the um, of the ordinance. Uh, so to me, those look more like requirements, right? They're, I mean, I, I guess a, a requirement is a condition, but but do we normally list other requirements that are already in the ordinance anyway? Uh, Commissioner Benavides, commissioners, um, not really. This is more just reiteration um, and information for the applicant, uh, because I know that, you know, looking through the code for what is required and what is not required is not necessarily something that everybody does on their day to day. Um, so this just kind of more confirms for the applicant that they are they understand that they need to look at this section of the code. They are going to follow these requirements. Our application asks for documents that confirm that. Um, and the reason why I called out a couple of the different um, specific uh, sections and requirements for like including license number and posting your license. This is so that the applicants know post approval that they need to do this in case they weren't looking at that earlier section of the ordinance they weren't sure if that applied. Okay, I I, I get it. Uh, this is new for all of us so <laughs> there'll be a little bit of a learning curve here. Thank you. Any further questions before we move on. All right, well is the um, is the applicant present. Yes, stand by. Hold on. There we go. Hello, how are Hi. you? Good evening. Good. Would you please state your uh, full name and address for the record? Uh, Paul Holmes. Cassandra Holmes. Excellent. Attorney Winter. Did you need our address? Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You better, please go ahead. 6769 Guadalupe Trail Northwest. Okay, Great. Mr. And Mrs. Holmes, could you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yeah. Thank yes. you. All right. Would you like to speak about your application? We would. You know, we, we appreciate the, uh, the approval. And, you know, as you all celebrate 4th Street, we want to champion for it as well. So with our application before this whole deal, it's, it's always been friends and family. And now we see an opportunity. So why not take it, right? Well, well, great. Um, do we have any questions from the commission um, for for the applicant? No, I'm right. not seeing any. So, um, Kiko, do we have anyone lined up to speak in in favor of the application? Commissioners, there are nobody signed up to speak in favor or opposed. But if anybody would like to speak, they can raise their hand. Great. Thank you, Kiko. Um, well, before we move on, is there any other questions from the commission um, for the applicants? 
All right, I'm hearing none. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and close the floor for comment. And um, now do we have any discussion among the commission before a motion is made? All right, I'm not hearing any. Um, do we have a motion? Um, I move to approve the request by Paul and Cassandra Holmes for a bed and breakfast permit um, with conditions stated in the planning report. I'll second that. Okay, um, Commissioner Christensen has moved to approve um, BB21-01 with the conditions as stated in the report. Commissioner Benavides has seconded the motion. Um, do we have any discussion on the motion before we move on to a roll call? Um, you know, just, just stating um, this, that uh, compliance has been demonstrated in the planning report, and um, I, I feel inclined to approve it because of those reasons. Um, any other discussion before we move on? All right, uh, we'll move on to a roll call vote. Commissioner Christensen? Yes. Commissioner Benavides? Yes. Commissioner Gay? Yes. Commissioner Seavey? Yes. Commissioner Michelson? Yes. All right, the motion carries unanimously. Let the record show that the public hearing item 3C, request by Paul and Cassandra Holmes for a bed and breakfast permit is formally closed. We will now move on to item 3D. Um, another bed and breakfast, BB21-02, a request by John and Ann Stevenson for a bed and breakfast permit as allowed by 9.2.25E1 in the R2 zone in the Guadalupe Trail character area. The property is located at 803 Green Valley Road Northwest and is legally known as Lot 8, Block 7, Green Valley Edition, situated in projected section 29, Township 11 North, Range 3 East, NMPM, Albuquerque, New Mexico, as filed in the office of the Bernalillo County Clerk on September 2nd, 1949. The property contains 0 0.3696 acres, more or less. Do we have any commissioners who will recuse themselves? Uh, Chair CV, I will recuse myself from this vote. Okay, we'll let the record show that Commissioner Gay is recusing himself on item 3D. Um, Director Justice, may we have the planning report? Uh, yes, commissioners. Um, so again, this will be a brief report. Um, this operation has existed since at least 2018, uh, which does qualify it for the grace period to be legally non grandfathered and legally non conforming. Bed and breakfasts are permissive uses in residential zones uh, with a bed and breakfast permit. And there's a number of requirements for applicants to meet. Um, and this applicant is in compliance with all of them uh, that's explained in the report. The applicant is in the process of obtaining a CRS certificate. Um, the applicant provided a copy of another business license for their mailing address to demonstrate their intent to get a CRS certificate for 803 Green Valley. Um, but that is not technically a requirement of our bed and breakfast permits. That's just something that they would need uh, upon approval of the bed and breakfast. They need that for the business license. Um, so um, as this is an existing operation prior to June of 2021, this does allow for legal nonconformance of off-premises operator. Um, and this is in conformance with an economic development section of our master plan. Um, this, again, this applicant is in compliance uh, with a number of guest rooms, uh, parking off street, their rules of operation uh, and their floor plan and site plan, and they'd be grandfathered in for an off-premises operator. Um, so with that, the department recommends approval of BB 21-02, a request for a bed and breakfast permit as allowed by section 9.2.25 E1 in the R2 zone in the Guadalupe Trail character area with the following conditions and findings. Uh, before the applicant is issued business license, they must provide a copy of their CRS certificate for village records. Operation is subject to the requirements for bed and breakfast establishments listed under section 9.2.25 E1. Per section 9.2.25 E1E, -E, this operation is considered not conforming for the operator off premises during rental. Per uh, section 9.2.25 E1B12, the operator must include license number in advertisements. Per section 9.2.25 E1B14, the operator must uh, post license in their operation where it is visible. Per section 9.2.25 E1B17, the bed and breakfast must be inspected annually by the fire department uh, with the findings of this application is in conformance with section 9.2.25 E1 um, and public notice requirements have been met. I stand for any questions. 
Thank you, Director Justice. Um, any questions? Uh, Commissioner Michelson, please go ahead. Yes. Has the village received any complaints for the operation of this bed and breakfast? No, we have not. Thank you. Um, Director Justice, I do have one question. Um, I'm just curious why the uh, the business registration um, indicating a home home occupation um, Stevenson's Carpentry Service why that was included with this application is that an error or is that of relevance to this um, item? Uh, so, <coughs> Commissioner CV, Commissioners, uh, that's a great question. Uh, the reason that this is included in your packet is that this is this was provided by the applicant to demonstrate their intent to get a CRS for uh, this business at this address and demonstrating the fact that they have gotten CRS certificates um, in the past for other addresses. Because that was the only piece of their application that on my, on my application form, I asked for their CRS certificate. They did not have that, um, but we can approve the bed and breakfast permit without that CRS certificate. Um, just one of the conditions being that they get a CRS for this address. And that was just demonstrating that they would follow through with that. Great, that makes sense to me. Thank you, Director Justice. Um, if I'm not hearing any further questions, um, is the applicant present? Yes, stand by. Good, good evening. Are you able to hear us? Yes. Yes. Great. W would you please um, state your name and address for the record? Ann Stevenson, 712 Tyler North Northwest. Uh, John Stevenson, same address. Great. Attorney Winter, would you please swear in uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Stevenson? Mr. and Mrs. Stevenson, thank you for raising your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you. All right, would you like to speak about your application? Um, well, I've, we've been operating as a short-term rental since February of 2018. We may maintain the property inside and out. Um, we make it very clear that there are no parties allowed. And we found that our guests are, are um, often uh, people visiting family that live in Albuquerque Somebody was just here for a rock climbing competition, the balloon fiesta, of course, and, um, if, and also people who are waiting to close on a house or having work done on their house or something. They're all really nice um, people to have in, in Los Ranchos, and then they loved Los Ranchos after being here. Uh, and as far as the CRS number, um, Ann got her federal ID number and she needed that and she applied for the CRS number today. Yes, I have my confirmation number. I just still don't have the CRS. So, but that is in process. Well, great, thank you for that. Um, is, are there, do we have any questions from the commission for the applicants? All right, I'm not hearing any. Um, Kiko, do we have anyone lined up to speak in favor of the application? Commissioners, there's nobody lined up to speak in favor or oppose, but if anybody would like to speak now, would you please raise your hand? All right, thank you, Kiko. Um, do, do we have any more discussion while the applicant is present um, from the commission? And hearing none, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and close the floor um, for comment. And uh, do we have any do we have any discussion among the commission um, before we move on to a motion? Well, yeah. So uh, so I'm I'm noting that uh, so this is uh, one of these uh, situations where the applicant is not living on the property, but it's being grandfathered in. Just just to make sure I, I got that correct, right? <laughs> Um, okay. All right, with, uh, without hearing any other discussion, um, do we have a motion? 
Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve uh, this application with uh, the conditions as listed uh, in Director uh, Justice's report. Second. Okay, uh, Commissioner Benavides has moved to approve um, 21 BB21-02 with the conditions as stated in the report. Um, Commissioner Christensen has seconded the motion. Um, do we have any discussion before we move on to a, uh, a vote? Just echoing what I said last time, this uh, compliance has been adequately demonstrated, and for those reasons, I would I would be inclined to approve this. Um, so, moving on to a roll call vote, uh, Commissioner Christensen. Yes. Commissioner Benavides. Yes. Commissioner Gay. Oh, excuse me, Commissioner Gay, you have recused yourself. I'm not asking you that. Um, Commissioner CV. Yes. Commissioner Michelson. Yes. All right, the motion carries um, four votes in favor, one um, recused. Uh, let the record show that the public hearing item 3D, the request by John and Ann Stevenson for a bed and breakfast is uh, formally closed. We'll now move on to item 3E, bed and breakfast 21-03, a request by Leah and Jeremy Qualls for a bed and breakfast permit as allowed by 9.2.25 E1 in the R3 zone in the 4th Street character area. The, pro the property is located at 6621 Edgewood Drive Northwest and is legally known as lot 165 Zia Gardens, situated in projected section 28, Township 11 North, Range 3 East, and MPM. School District Number Four, Bernalillo County, New Mexico, as filed in the office of the Bernalillo County Clerk on June 28, 1941. The property contains 0 0.39 acres, more or less. Um, do we have any commissioners who will recuse themselves from this item? Okay, hearing none. Um, Director Justice, may we uh, please have the planning report? Uh, yes, commissioners. Uh, as with the other applications, um, this operation has existed since. Uh, 2018, putting it uh, within the time frame for uh, to be allowed to be grandfathered in and legally non-conforming. Um, bed and breakfasts are permissive uses in residential zones, so long as they have a bed and breakfast permit. And there are a number of requirements for applicants to meet, uh, and the applicant is in compliance uh, with all of them, that, as explained in the report. Um, this includes, uh, you know, the number of guest rooms, off-street parking, um, compliant rules of operation, and compliant floor plan and site plan. Um, they are uh, planning to be grandfathered in for off-premises operator as they've been in existence prior uh, to June of 2021. Um, and this is in conformance with the master plan and the economic development section. Um, and with that, the department recommends approval of BB21-03, request for a bed and breakfast permit as allowed by section 9.2.25E1 in the R3 zone in the 4th Street character area with the following conditions and findings. Um, that the operation is subject to the requirements for bed and breakfast establishments listed under section 9.2.25E1. Per section 9.2.25 E1E, this operation is considered legally non-conforming for the operator off-premises during rental. Per section 9.2.25 E1B12, operator must include license number and advertisements. Per section 9.2.25 E1B14, operator must post a uh, license in operation where it is visible. Per section 9.2.25 E1B17, better breakfast must be inspected annually by the fire department with the findings that this application is in conformance with section 9.2.25 E1 and public notice requirements have been met. I stand for any questions. Thank you, Director Justice. Um, do we have any questions? Um, Commissioner Michelson, please go ahead. Yes. Have there been any submissions to the village uh, by anyone in objection to their operation? No, there have not. Thank you. Any other questions before we move on? Okay, um, well, is the, um, is the applicant present? Chair commissioners, I'm not sure. There's a phone call on and I'm going to verify if this is the applicant. Okay, thank you, Kiko. Is the person whose phone number ends in 6057, um, are you the applicant? If so, would you let us know? Yes, that is me. I am Leah Qualls. Well, great. Um, good evening. 
Um, would you please Hi. state your full name and address for the record? Leah Qualls at 6621 Edgewood Drive Northwest. Okay, and Attorney Winter, would you please swear in uh, Ms. Qualls? Ms. Qualls, please raise your right hand. I know we can't see you, but I trust that you're doing <laughs> that. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Qualls, would you like to speak about your application? I just want to thank you all for the opportunity for us to be grandfathered in. Uh, we've lived in the village for over 30 years as a, a married couple and raising our children uh, right across the street from the home that we have been short-term rentaling for the last um, three years and just love to be able to share the village with other people who come to visit. And again, thank you for this opportunity to continue to do so. Well, thank you. Um, do we have any questions from the commission for the applicant? Well, I'm hearing none. Um, Kiko, do we have anyone lined up to speak in favor of the uh, application? There was no one lined up to speak in favor or opposed. If anybody would like to speak, if you could please use your raise your hand button right now. Uh, so Thank commissioners, um, just I would like to read aloud for the record um, a comment that was submitted in writing. Um, to include it for this uh, application. And uh, just to note for the record, this is also in support of the next application, BB21-04. Um, uh, this was submitted after the meeting packet was published uh, and I forwarded it to you all. Uh, so statement of support at PNZ meeting, September 7th, 2021 for B&B permits in the Greenwoods neighborhood, Henry Schonard, 6603 Elwood Northwest. I believe that Leah and Jeremy Qualls and Michael Bernal were requesting short-term rental in parentheses B&B permits in the Greenwoods neighborhood are doing a good thing for all of us in our community. I do not pretend to represent anyone else in our neighborhood, but I think what Leah, Jeremy, and Michael are doing is community development of the best sort. I read over the requirements in the application form for operating an STR. Phew, I commend them for taking on the challenge of doing it right. In particular, Leah and Jeremy transformed a uh, neighborhood eyesore into a beautiful place which benefits the whole community. By spiffing up Edgewood, they make money for themselves and pay taxes that directly support great village projects and they make me proud to be part of the Greenwoods neighborhood. Thank you, Director Justice. Um, do we have any further comments from the commission? All right, well, hearing none, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and close the floor now for comments. Um, and is there any discussion on the application prior to a motion? Mm. Well, I mean, I just, I just want to say, I, I, I appreciate uh, Commissioner Mickelson's question about uh, have there been any complaints? I think that's a valid question, and and I, and I, and I, I it's something I may forget to uh, to ask. So even if you ask it every single time, it's a good question. <laughs> and and I, I do want to, uh, I, I, I'm sorry I didn't bring this up sooner, but I, I assume that that uh, these applications were also posted outside the property. Is that uh, yes, Commissioner Benavides, commissioners, uh, our public notice requirements involve uh, mailing to all neighbors within 300 feet, okay. if it's under two acres or 400 feet, a signed post on the property and publication in the office of the journal. That's done for every application that comes before the commission. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Well, if, uh, if there aren't any uh, further discussion, um, do we have a motion? Go ahead, Commissioner Michelson. I'd like to move for approval of BB21-03 as uh, presented by uh, Commissioner, by uh, Tiffany Justice. I will, um, I will second the motion. Commissioner Michelson has moved to approve um, BB21-03 as presented. Commissioner CV has seconded the motion. Um, any discussion before we move on to a uh, vote? All right, uh, com Commissioner Christensen, please. True, I'm just gonna um, say that, yeah, I think we do need to approve it. Compliance has been demonstrated. Thank you very much. Um, we'll now move on to a uh, roll call vote. Commissioner Christensen? Yes. Commissioner Benavides? Yes. 
Commissioner Gay? Yes. Commissioner Seavey? Yes. And Commissioner Michelson? Yes. All right, the motion carries unanimously. Let the record show that the public hearing item 3E, the request by Leah and Jeremy Qualls for a bed and breakfast permit is formally closed. We'll now move on to item 3F, BB21-04, a request by Michael Bernal for a bed and breakfast permit as allowed by 9.2.25E1 in the R3 zone in the 4th Street character area. The property is located at 6719 Edgewood Drive Northwest and is legally known as the Southerly 116.18 of lot 157 Zia Gardens, situated in projected section 28, Township 11 North, Range 3 East, NMPM, School District Number 4, Bernalillo County, New Mexico, as filed in the Office of the Bernalillo County Clerk on June 28, 1941. The property contains 0 0.3 acres, more or less. Um, do we have any commissioners who will recuse themselves from this item? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Um, Director Justice, may we please have the planning report? Uh, yes, commissioners, uh, so this operation has existed uh, since 2019, uh, putting it within our time frame to be legally grandfathered in. Um, bed and breakfast are permissive uses in residential zones, so long as they have a bed and breakfast permit. Um, there's a number of requirements for applicants to meet, um, and the applicant is in compliance with all of them, um, as stated in the report. Uh, they are uh, living on premises. They are compliant with a number of guest rooms, uh, off-street parking, um, compliant rules of operation, and uh, floor plan and site plan. Um, the existing operation prior to June of 2021 allows for legal nonconformance of uh, the number of guest rooms and off-premises operator. However, the applicant is already compliant with both requirements, and leaving nonconforming status is unnecessary. Um, they plan on renovating a couple of rooms um, to add to their application that's already included in this uh, application. And even with those addition, additions and changes to their residence, they still will have the same number of guest rooms uh, that's included in this application. Um, and uh, this is in conformance with the master plan and the economic development section. Um, and uh, just for additional clarification, this uh, operator does operate two separate bed and breakfast, like two separate Airbnb listings. Um, however, these, both of these listings will fall under the same bed and breakfast license with the Village of Los Ranchos. Um, we don't necessarily care how many listings uh, the operator has, um, whether they operate each room individually, um, or, or whether they advertise each room individually, or the whole house together, or you know any mix or match. Um, each bed and breakfast permit is um, done for each operation, the way that it is set up, it, even if they end up advertising on multiple platforms or having multiple listings on the same platform, we're, we're looking at it from our perspective, not necessarily from, you know, trying to have multiple <laughs> listings. So um, this bed and breakfast permit, if approved, would cover both of the applicants uh, existing Airbnb listings that are separate. Um, so uh, with that, the department recommends approval of BB21-04, a request for a bed and breakfast permit as allowed by section 2.25E1 in the R3 zone in the 4th Street character area with the following conditions and findings. That the operation is subject to the requirements for bed and breakfast establishments listed under section 9.2.25 E1. Per section 9.2.25 E1 B12, operator must include license number and advertisements. So just for additional clarification, on, on the multiple listings, they would include the same license number. And that is compliant with what uh, our code requires. Um, per section 9.2.25 E1 B14, the operator must post license in the operation where it's visible. Per section 9.2.25 E1B17, bed and breakfast must be inspected annually by the fire department. With the findings that the application is in conformance, the section 9.2.25 E1 and public notice requirements have been met. I stand for any questions. Thank you, Director Justice. Um, Commissioner Michelson, please go ahead. I have two questions. Of course, my first one is, has the village received any uh, formal complaints or filed notices on this property? No. My second one is, it shows two different uh, sections, the orange one and the yellow one. Can they rent these out to two different people at the same time, or can they rent out all of it to one person at the same time? Uh, Commissioner Michelson, commissioners, the applicant could do both. Um, what um, our permit is 
asking for is the information for the number of rooms, the occupancy. Um, they get to choose how they rent out their operation, whether it's individual rooms or all together. So the two, two rooms together rented out to one person is still in uh, compliance with our ordinances? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions for the planning director? Okay, uh, we'll move on. Is the, um, is the applicant present? Yes, stand by. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Would you please uh, state your name and address for the record? Yes, my name is Michael Bernal and my address is 6719 Edgewood Drive, Northwest. Thank you. Um, Attorney Bernal, Winter. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bernal, would you, would you care to speak about your application? Um, yes, I would like to, first of all, thank the commission for letting me um, speak to you. And, um, and also thanks, Tiffany, Justice, you've been very helpful with this whole process. And um, I just wanted to say that I, I thank you for the opportunity to let me continue to run my, um, my Airbnbs. It has really been beneficial to me as I have been able to use the funds that I have been getting from that to really work on the house and improve it and, and really make it, a, you know, a, an improvement for the whole neighborhood. So, um, and also I, I really enjoy um, running the Airbnb and and running these short-term rentals. So um, I thank you for the opportunity to let me continue doing this. Yeah, great, well, thank you. Um, do we have any questions from the commission for the applicant? All right, well, hearing none, um, Kiko, do we have anyone lined up to speak in favor um, of the application? There is no one lined up to speak for or against. If anybody would like to speak, they can use their raise their hand button now. Great, thank you, Kiko. Um, do we have any further comments from the commission? All right, well, hearing none, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close the floor now for comments. Um, any discussion from the commission prior to a motion? And hearing none, um, do we have a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, the application with uh, the conditions that uh, Director Justice has, has in her report. I'll second. Okay. Um, Commissioner Benavides has moved to approve um, BB 21-04 as presented and Commissioner Christensen has seconded the motion. Um, is there any further discussion before we move on to a uh, roll call vote? All right, um, I will I'll just state as previously that um, conformance um, with the ordinance was demonstrated adequately in the, in the report and for those reasons I I'm inclined to approve it. Um, we'll now move on to a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Christensen? Yes. Commissioner Benavides? Yes. Commissioner Gay? Yes. Commissioner Seavey? Yes. Commissioner Michelson? Yes. Okay, the, the motion carries unanimously. Let the record show that the public hearing item 3F, the request by Michael Bernal for a bed and breakfast is formally closed. Um, we'll now move on to item four, um, adjournment. And actually, uh, commissioners, if I could just uh, interject, I apologize. I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the meeting, um, but 
uh, both uh, Commissioner Berenson and Commissioner Albert have left the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, mm. Commissioner Albert uh, was appointed last month as the alternate judge um, and therefore cannot hold two positions and Commissioner Berenson has left for personal reasons. So uh, just to give you all a heads up that we are looking for new commissioners. We are um, in the process of potentially appointing new commissioners um, to fill in this, these gaps. So thank you. Thank you, Director Justice. Um, well, we'll now move on to item four, which is adjournment. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion I move to to oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, please. <laughs> motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Okay, Commissioner Christensen has uh, moved to adjourn and Commissioner Benavides has seconded the motion. Um, all in favor? Please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. The motion carries unanimously. Um, the, the meeting for September 7th, 2021 is now adjourned at 8.45 p.m. See you guys next week. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Well, Take care, we have an informal discussion. I don't think with a special meeting. Oh, we don't, special. okay. All right. Uh, do I, I just want to ask just uh, Director Justice one question. Now we're, we're down to, how many do we need for a quorum? Uh, I believe we still need four, uh, but um, yes, uh, Attorney Winter is nodding her head. So yes, okay. we do still need four. Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone. Have a good evening. You too, night. <laughs>